It's Leah at Flight Drive Store with Matt. Me. <laughs> That's him. He's wearing our awesome new t-shirts that we're offering at Flight Drive Store. Turn around, let's see the little icon on the back. Woohoo! Isn't that cute? I haven't put the products up yet, but hope yeah. to do so later today. They'll be up by the time you read that you look at this. So, but we're gonna do a video today on fly trap care myths. Um, Venus fly trap care myths. And this is requested by Ben or Benny. So yeah, here we go. I'm going to ask some questions and Matt's going to answer them. And he is an expert on these. So he's got some good info for you. Okay, so one of the first myths is that fly traps, Venus fly traps, are supposed to be raised in terrariums, like enclosed glass or otherwise spaces. Is that a myth? Or is it, should we be growing fly traps in terrariums? Uh, fly traps can be grown in terrariums in the short term, but everyone I've known who's ever grown them long term in a terrarium typically has issues. So what you gain with a terrarium is elevated humidity and a controlled environment, but what you lose is fresh air, sunlight, and the ability, typically terrariums don't have drainage, so you'll end up with mineral buildup over time, and uh, the lack of air movement and the lack of really strong sunlight usually leads to mold problems. So you're going to have issues almost inevitably inevitably everyone i've ever known who's grown any kind of uh for any period of time in a terrarium or indoors typically ends up having problems so mold and also rot or is mold that mold and rot mm -hmm. and mineral buildup okay so not rot per se i mean when the plant sheds traps as they do naturally like as they grow they'll they'll shed some of their older traps uh, if those aren't removed fairly quickly you, you got a chance for mold to start growing on them but what really typically happens and the most common thing to kill a fly trap is crown rot and without a good air movement you're going to have and with elevated humidity levels you're going to have a much higher chance of getting crown rot and it's going to come eventually yeah so there's there's scary places um they can def they can yeah, definitely be scary some people's for fly traps. right that they're required but the thing is is fly traps can grow in very low humidity levels we live here in oregon where the humidity in the summer is typically under 20% relative humidity. So they don't need humidity. They do better if they have humidity, but it's certainly not a requirement. As yes. long as their soil's moist, they will keep themselves hydrated and grow well. Okay, so that leads me to the second flytrap care myth, which would be that Venus flytraps are swamp plants and they need to be in lots of water all the time. Yeah, so people say they're swamp or bog plants, and while it's true technically that they're found in and around boggy areas, where they actually grow, and I've been to the wild to see them in their natural habitat, they, so the pitcher plants that cohabitate naturally with fly traps typically are growing in or right in near the water, whereas the fly traps are slightly uphill, a little bit away from the water. So what the soil they're in typically is uh, moist, but not soaking wet. And so in cultivation, what we've discovered, and, and I have to give credit to my uh, long-term friend, uh, Steve Doonan, for, for persuading me to give growing this way a try. Because I had read, this is probably 12, 14 years ago when I started growing as an adult again. Uh, I had heard that you have to keep them sitting in water all the time. So that's what I did. And I'd always get problems. Um, and they just wouldn't grow as well as what I was seeing coming from Steve's plants. Um, he lives down in New Mexico, grows outside in New Mexico in a high desert area, super hot, super windy, super dry, and he grows his plants in pots just like this. And so he and I partnered a few years ago and he gave me a lot of these pots and I still use them. Like they're my favorite pots for growing fly traps in, mostly because they're attractive, but also because they're insulating and deep enough and as you can see, none of these are sitting in water. And I never, typically never leave fly traps sitting in water unless we're going on a vacation and I know that they'll need water while we're gone and might dry out. That's the only time I ever leave fly traps sitting in water. If you look at any of our trays, there's no water in any of the trays right now. Yeah, I mean, the growing medium is moist enough for sure, but it's, there's not sopping wet. And, right, you um, can never ever let them dry out, but you don't want them sitting in water all the time and you'll get people who say I don't want to grow big roots I want big traps well the reality is, is the longer the root system gets the bigger the plant can get because the roots can support a larger plant and so yes you can get a one-off trap here or there uh, on a small plant 
that's big, but ideally you let these things get a really significant root system and then they become almost like heads of cabbage. The plants that Steve grows down in New Mexico, with the number of flies he gets and the way he grows them, they are the biggest plants I've ever seen. Yeah, the technique works. Okay, so here's another fly trap care myth um, that you can explain, which is that Venus fly traps will hurt you or your pet. <laughs> People write and say, is it gonna like hurt my plant or hurt my finger or what have you? Well, right. I mean, well, we shouldn't laugh because you don't, I mean, I guess if you don't, <laughs> when I said that, you just immediately stop laughing. Um, because they, you know, if you have no experience with them, you just don't know. But here we are to clear that up. What do you say to that one? Well, they're non-toxic. They have, so if a lot of people worry when they're sometimes pets eat them, like the cats in particular <laughs> seem to like to gnaw on fly traps when people grow them indoors. Uh, so they're non-toxic, so you don't have to worry about your pet getting poisoned or your kid getting poisoned. Um, and yeah, the traps are not dangerous or harmful in any way. They're basically just like a leaf um, growing into a position where they're spring-loaded. And when they close, it's not any more significant than just having like a leaf that curled in, like a dry leaf curled around your finger. So okay. they're not harmful. They're not dangerous. There is uh, no risk in growing these at all. Yeah. I, th I think it kind of tickles when they close on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next on to the next myth. We just have a few more here. Um, that Venus flytraps are indoor plants. Like you could just pop one on your desk. And it, I mean, that would be cool, but. Again, there, it, this is one of those points that if you go out there, there are still plenty of websites that say you should grow them indoors in a windowsill and keep them sitting in water all the time. Even what is reportedly the ultimate care guide on YouTube that has a way, way, way more hits than anything we'll ever have, probably. Uh, they say, keep them sitting in water, and, and it, that's just not true, and it's similarly growing indoors. Um, again, short-term, in a very sunny windowsill, they can do okay, but they really do need to be outside in full sun. Yeah, we've um, experimented growing them in our... We have a really nice window that has... Um, light coming in through all the angles it was a bay window and even in that case uh the plant itself thinned out a lot and got really weak and droopy and yeah they just without good strong light the leaves don't mature properly the traps don't get very large and they'll they'll typically grow spindly um you can look at these actually these were um in these... light deprived yep. conditions for a long time you can see with the spindly little yeah the traps don't mature the leaves look spindly and that's what yeah. you'll get when you grow in low light on the other end of the spectrum, if it's super hot and super dry, um, for instance, down in Arizona, people typically growing outdoors there will have trouble. If it gets over 100, they do not like being that hot. So it's ideal to either move them into shade or provide them with a shade cloth, 40 to 50% shade cloth in those conditions. But if you're growing most of the United States where it's a temperate climate, not over 95 to 100 degrees, just sit them in full sun and let them do their thing. They'll be super healthy and happy. Okay. So outside. Outside sun. Okay. Outside Short sun. Short term indoors sunshine. is okay. Again, but yeah. uh, don't make a habit of it and don't leave them in, I would say, for more than a month indoors. Yeah, and that would be, I wouldn't even, yeah, that's a lot for indoors. Unless uh, it's dormancy time. Yeah. But, and it has yeah. to be direct sunlight. Like it's touching the plant. A lot of people say, no, I've got direct sunlight. And I, it's on a porch where the direct sunlight is outside, um, but the porch covering is keeping the plant from getting sunlight. So it has to be sunlight that's touching the plant, not that's just hanging out around there. Okay, uh, one more question and you've got 45 seconds to answer this. Um, a myth about fly traps, do you have to feed them? They do not require being fed. They grow much more quickly if they catch a meal every once in a while or if you provide them with one, but they are just like any other plant that's green. They have chlorophyll and they photosynthesize, hence the reason they need more sunlight. Or they appreciate a lot of sunlight. What about like hamburger? <laughs> yeah, anything they, if you do choose to feed them, make sure it's an insect or like freeze dried bloodworms or something along those lines. Yeah, no human food for no them. No human please. food. It's Some not sort good of bug them. or insect is best. Okay, so those are our myths for today. Uh, contact us if you have more questions about um, care or myths that you know of. And check out t-shirts online. Later.